Is that really how you feel? Yeah, that's right. Honestly, I couldn't care less about the kids. Why did we even have so many kids? They were unnecessary. Husband casually saying such things in front of the kids. As a person, and as a parent, I can never forgive that. Thanks to my husband's remarks, I understood that he really didn't care about the kids and me. I couldn't bear it anymore and said, Let's just get divorced. I can't take it anymore. He didn't seem particularly surprised and instead replied confidently. Fine, but you'll take care of the three kids, okay? I'll take the house for compensation. My name is Caitlin Thorne, a 35-year-old housewife. During college, I met Dan in the same class and fell in love, eventually getting married after a long courtship. During our courtship, he always seemed to prioritize me. I never asked for special treatment, but he treated me well, and I happily accepted his care. And when he proposed, he said this. I'll make you the happiest in the world. I love you. So please marry me. Out of love for him, I gladly accepted his proposal. I was excited about the future we would build together. He wanted many children and a nice house, and I agreed to that dream too. But despite encouraging each other to work hard together after marriage, my husband's attitude seemed to become cold. Whether the married life he imagined was different or his feelings towards me changed, I couldn't figure out the reason, but since there were no major problems in our married life, I left it as it was. I hoped that my husband would become kind again as he was during our courtship. A few months later, I gave birth to twins. A girl and a boy. I knew I was having twins during pregnancy, but I was still overjoyed when they arrived. And I also felt a sense of responsibility and nervousness about raising them both at once. I'll do my best at parenting with you, I said hoping my husband would respond kindly. But his reaction seemed somewhat cold. Look how cute they are. Why don't you hold one too? Hmm. Oh, I can't right now. Maybe later. When I tried to get him to hold the baby, he made excuses to refuse. I couldn't help but wonder why he wouldn't hold them even though they were so adorable. He confided that he didn't know how to handle it. I thought he should just love the children genuinely, but it seemed he was struggling as a husband. I decided to support him in getting used to the children. However, even after three months had passed since the birth, he still seemed to avoid interacting with the children. He would hand them over to me as soon as I held them. Why wouldn't he get more involved? Although he was tired from working hard to support the family, I couldn't say anything considering his efforts. Although he seemed to be avoiding interaction with the children, by the time they turned one, he wanted another child. How about having one more? Um, but you don't even try to interact with the kids properly. Yet you want another one? That's impossible. I said a little harshly. Then he apologized, seeming sorry. I'm really sorry until now. From now on, I'll take care of them properly. I'll work hard not only at work but also at parenting, so please. Remember what I said when we got married? I wanted lots of children. I like the atmosphere of having everyone together. He said that and pleaded with me multiple times. Eventually, I gave in and agreed to have another child. But I also warned him. If you put it that way, there's no choice, but when children are born, it's important to responsibly raise their lives, right? I understand, of course. If you understand, 
then that's fine. Seeing his attitude, I decided to have the child. And smoothly, I became pregnant and had a third child. When I told my husband that I was pregnant, he was very happy. What? Really? I'm so happy it happened so quickly. Thank you. I'll work even harder. Seeing him say that with shining eyes, I felt relieved. And then, a few months later, I safely gave birth to a baby. A cute baby boy was born. But my husband didn't keep his promise and betrayed me. Since the birth of the third child, I tried to get my husband to help with childcare. That was the agreement. However, even when I asked him various things, he refused to help, saying he had never done it before or that it was something a mother should do. Although before the children were born, he said he would do housework and childcare. Hey, can't you at least play with one of the older kids? I can't handle all three of them by myself. Huh. I don't know about that. I'm busy with work. Who do you think is putting food on the table? Do you know how hard I'm working to support the family? Besides, you're a housewife, so you should be able to take care of three kids, right? My husband said that and took on a harsh attitude. But, you said you'd also do parenting. Shut up. I have an important business dinner now, and after that, I'm going golfing. I don't know when I'll be back, and I don't want to get tired playing with the kids. That's how my husband yelled at me. By this time, the older children could speak and assert their own wills. So when they said, Daddy, let's play, and went to my husband, he refused. I'm busy now, play with mommy. Hey Caitlin, do something about them. They're his own children. Why doesn't he play with them when he was the one who said he wanted a lot of children? I couldn't understand my husband's words and actions. Instead of trying to raise the children, my husband avoided them. Perhaps because of his continued oppressive attitude, the children had stopped getting close to him. And my husband was doing one more thing that was unbearable. He stopped putting the money he earned into the household. Originally, my husband was an outdoorsy type and often went on trips and drives. Before the children were born, we talked about traveling as a family and taking drives to tourist spots to take lots of pictures. But now, I'm not sure if he remembers any of that. My husband would give me the bare minimum money, saying, this should be enough for living expenses, and spend all the rest on his hobbies. Hey, could you think a little more about the household budget? If this continues, we won't be able to feed the children properly. Huh. Haven't we managed somehow until now? Don't be so demanding. Besides, you've never had trouble with money, have you? I'm the one earning, so it'll be fine. No matter what I said, my husband wouldn't listen. Certainly, we had managed somehow until now. But that was because I was desperately saving and allocating money for the children's education. Now, I often have only two meals when I have some extra food, and usually, I have to get by with just one meal. Moreover, we were living in a dilapidated second-hand house that needed repairs urgently. So I bought tools from cheap stores and home centers and repaired them myself. But he didn't seem to notice my efforts. Because he would come home drunk almost every day. My husband would always go to a hostess bar with his juniors after work. Since there were often business cards of girls in his suit, he must have been going to various places. Before I knew it, our family had strayed far from the happy family image we had envisioned at the beginning of our marriage and had become a dark, 
hellish situation with no conversation. I wondered when it went wrong, which choice was wrong, and if I was at fault. But it seems that my husband is the cause no matter how I think about it. If he would just take the family and the children a little more seriously, the situation would improve. I sigh every time I see the dwindling money and bank balance. From around this time, I began to seriously consider divorce. Even if I stayed with my husband, I couldn't imagine the children growing up healthy. The atmosphere in the house had already become heavy. In this situation, what would happen to the children when they reached adolescence? With such worries, I quietly asked the children about living separately from their father. Hey, would you be sad if mommy and daddy lived separately? Then my eldest son and daughter said, as long as mommy is there, we'll be fine. That was a happy response for me, but there were complex emotions somewhere in my heart. One day, I woke up with a severe headache and couldn't get out of bed. I somehow managed to gather my strength and headed to the living room, where the children were already awake. Even though they were only four years old, they were preparing breakfast and getting dressed. But my husband was not like that. Hey Caitlin, what are you doing? Where's my breakfast? And my clothes? I'm running late, so hurry up and get them ready. All right. All right. I somehow managed to muster up some strength and prepare my husband's morning routine. He left the house without a word of thanks, expressing his dissatisfaction. While the children were concerned about me, my husband didn't seem to care at all. I asked the children to let me rest for a while and decided to rest on the living room sofa. Since it was a holiday for the kindergarten that day, the children were also at home. I thought I would feel better with a little rest, but before I knew it, I had fallen asleep. Hey. Wake up. I woke up to my husband's voice. He was clearly angry. What's going on? When I came back, dinner wasn't prepared, the breakfast dishes were still there, and the house was a mess. What have you been doing all this time? You're supposed to be a housewife, so do your housework properly." He yelled at me with force. At that moment, I felt something inside me snap. Do you have the right to say that to me? I appreciate that you're working, but isn't it strange to say such things when the family is going through a hard time? I'm also working hard for the family. You said you would help with housework and childcare when the children were born, remember? But you're just all talk and never keep your promises. Why can't you do what you said you would? Maybe it was a mistake to trust you. It's not fair to the children to have a father like you. I vented out all the feelings I had been holding back. My husband seemed very surprised that I would respond so clearly but he quickly retorted. Your role is to support me. I come first. Think about me before the children. Realizing that my husband no longer cared about the children, whom he had once desired so much, made me sad. Is that really how you feel? Yeah, that's right. Honestly, I couldn't care less about the kids. Why did we even have so many kids? They were unnecessary. My husband said such things in front of the children, which I could never forgive as a person and a parent. I couldn't bear it anymore and said, let's just get divorced. I can't take it anymore. He didn't seem particularly surprised and instead replied confidently. Fine, but you'll take care of the three kids. Okay. I'll take the house for compensation. That's how he responded. I would have laughed if compensation was something I wanted. But I was grateful that he agreed to take this rundown house. 
I'm sure the repair costs will be outrageous. I accepted my husband's terms without telling him anything about it. After that, since my health had improved a bit, I went to the city hall to get divorce papers. On the way back, I felt relieved that I could finally be away from my husband. But at the same time, I remembered the past. My husband had said he wanted to build a happy family at the beginning of our marriage. I found myself crying. How did it come to this? No, why did I fall for such a man? At night, when my husband came back from work, I handed him the divorce papers without saying a word. He signed them without any hesitation. So we divorced, but I wasn't worried at all. Because I had been preparing for this for a long time. I had consulted with my sister Hazel about my thoughts on divorce beforehand. My sister had started her own business, and it had been over five years since she started her company. It wasn't a big company, but it was profitable. And I was able to use my existing qualifications, so I was entrusted with accounting work after the divorce. Since deciding to divorce, I have been helping out at my sister's company as a volunteer. This was to make sure I could work as a full-time employee right after the divorce. And now that I was divorced from my husband, I was hired by my sister's company and started working. As for housing, I decided to stay at my sister's house for the time being to find a suitable and affordable place. My sister's house was quite large, so it was no problem for me and the three children to stay there. Besides, the children were very fond of my sister, so it was a very good environment to take our time to find a new home. About a month later, my husband suddenly contacted me. At first, I ignored his calls, but they were so persistent that I had to answer. Hello? What do you want? W what's going on with this house? It's leaking, the paint is peeling off everywhere, it's falling apart. Well, considering we bought a pretty old second-hand house, wasn't that to be expected? But it was in decent condition before. Why is it suddenly falling apart like this? You may not have noticed, but I was regularly cleaning the interior. But for the exterior, we need to hire a contractor. I even talked to you about it, but you dismissed it as a waste of money, remember? It's all your responsibility. Th that's. How much will it cost to fix all of this? I don't know. Well, buying a new house might be a better option in terms of cost. But can you afford it? After all, you have to pay child support for three kids. It might be tough for you to afford a new house. He didn't have anything else to say, and I hung up the phone. Then I blocked his number. After that, I heard that my husband tried to give up the house for free and move back to his parents' house, but he had already told my parents-in-law everything about the situation. Since my parents-in-law were on my side, they apparently turned him away. In the end, my husband ended up living in a cheap rental apartment, spending most of his salary on child support and leading a life where he couldn't afford to go drinking or to hostess bars, feeling the pain every day. On the other hand, I worked hard at my sister's company and supported my children. I was able to move to a reasonably priced and comfortable apartment, and I worked hard as a single mother. My children are my precious treasures, and just seeing their smiles gives me the strength to keep going no matter what. Today too, I put all my energy into working hard to feed my children delicious meals. How did you like this story? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.